Have you ever wondered where Legos originate? A box? A toy shop? Is it a factory? Yes. But where did they originate? Who created them? What was the individual's backstory? How did they manage it? You'll be surprised when you learn about the Lego story. In today's video, we're showing you how the inventor of this insane game changed the kids' world forever. Make sure to watch till the end and subscribe for more. Here we begin. The Lego Group, a privately held company based in Billund, Denmark, manufactures the Lego brand of plastic construction toys. Lego was the world's largest toy company as of 2021. Lego, the company's flagship product, is made up of various colored interlocking plastic bricks accompanied by various gears, figurines known as minifigures, and other parts. Lego pieces can be assembled and connected in various ways to build objects such as vehicles, buildings, and working robots. In addition, anything built can be disassembled, and the pieces reused to create new things. Oleg Kirk Christensen was the founder and designer of this amazing game. He was a Danish carpenter who lived from 7th of April 1891 to 11th of March 1958. In 1932, he founded the Lego Group, a construction toy company. Throughout his career, Christensen grew his company from a small woodworking shop that sold household goods to a wooden toy manufacturer. He named the company Lego and defined its core principles in 1934. After purchasing a plastic molding injection machine in 1947, Lego would eventually transition to producing plastic bricks. When Ole died in 1958, the company was handed over to his son, Godfred. Christensen developed an interest in whittling wood while working as a farmhand from age 6, between the two days per week he attended school. Christensen began working as an apprentice for his older brother, Christensen Bond Christensen in 1905 when he was 14. He left Denmark in 1911 to work as a carpenter in Germany for five years. Christensen used his savings to purchase the Billund Woodworking and Carpentry Shop in 1916 and made a profit over the years. During the late 1920s, the company concentrated on restoring and developing new buildings and manufacturing household goods for the local community. Christensen's business was nearly destroyed in 1924 when his sons, Carl George and Godfred, started a fire while experimenting with wood shavings. As a result, the workshop and the family home were destroyed by a fire. Following this occurrence, Christensen decided to expand his business by constructing a larger workshop with a family apartment. As a result, Christensen had a small workforce by 1930 to support his expanding business. Beginnings of Lego Christensen's business suffered during the early 1930s as Denmark experienced the Great Depression. Because of the drop in farming prices, many of his customers could not afford his products. Due to the decline in business, Christensen was forced to lay off many employees in early 1932, until only seven remained. The primary source of income, sales of ladders and ironing boards, was in short supply. Christensen was eventually forced to fire his last employee. Christensen decided to produce cheap wooden products, including wooden toys, to sell more products. His company went bankrupt, but he refused to stop making toys, even when his siblings requested it as a part of a bailout loan. Later in 1932, he founded an unknown company that was later named Lego. Christensen's company shifted its focus to wooden manufacturing toys such as yo-yos, pull-along animals, and trucks. Christensen had made the decision to concentrate his products on the development of children. Christensen effectively defined the company's core philosophy with this turning point, which would eventually be expressed in its name in 1934. The name Lego comes from Danish words leg got, which means play well. The company eventually became known as the Lego Group. Not until the day when I said to myself, you must choose between carpentry and toys, he said many years later, did I find the real answer. Christensen made his toys from birch wood cut from the forest, dried for two years, and then dried for three weeks in a kiln. Finally, the toys were assembled, sealed, sanded, and primed before being varnished three times. Due to the poverty levels in the local community, he struggled to sell his household products and wooden toys. However, he continued to make the toys, sometimes exchanging them for food. By 1935, the toy line had expanded to include a variety of animals, including a pull-along wooden duck that has since gone through numerous variations. 
the 1940s and 1950s. Despite adversity, Christensen managed to keep his business running during the Great Depression and Nazi Germany's occupation of Denmark during World War II. Another setback struck the company in 1942. A short circuit caused an electrical fire, destroying his factory as well as all of his stock and blueprints. The impact of so many setbacks almost convinced Christensen to close his business. Instead, however, he decided to restart out of a sense of responsibility to his employees. His new factory now had an assembly line in 1944. Many traditional materials used to manufacture products were not readily available at the end of World War II, so manufacturers looked for other cheap plastic alternatives. The LEGO company was the first toy manufacturer in Denmark to purchase a plastic induction molding machine in 1947, which cost more than double the previous year's profits. Christensen had spent his entire life working with wood and found the transition to plastic toys particularly difficult. Nevertheless, by 1949, the company was manufacturing a plastic product known as the Automatic Binding Brick. Christensen's son, Godfred, was named Junior Managing Director in 1950. The company spent the next decade focusing on the development of plastic brick, based on Hilary Fisher's Page self-locking building brick. Despite low sales in the early 1950s, the company persisted in developing its plastic brick, eventually employing acrylonite butyadine sirene ABS, to achieve the required clutch power or friction that holds two bricks together. On January 28, 1958, the LEGO brick design was patented in Copenhagen. LEGO in popular culture LEGO's popularity is evidenced by its widespread representation and uses in various cultural works, including books, films, and artworks. It has even been used as a teaching tool in the classroom. LEGO Education North America is a joint venture between Pisco Inc. and the LEGO Group's educational division in the United States. In addition, LEGO bricks were among the first inductees in the National Toy Hall of Fame at Strong in Rochester, New York in 1998. Let's talk about the design concept of this game. A universal system compromises LEGO pieces of all shapes and sizes. Despite changes in the design and purpose of individual pieces over time, each piece is still compatible with existing pieces. LEGO bricks from 1958 still interlock with those made today, and LEGO sets designed for young children are compatible with those for teenagers. Six 2x4 stud bricks can be combined in 915,103,765 different ways. Each LEGO piece must be manufactured with extreme precision. When two pieces are engaged, they must fit tightly while easily dissembling. LEGO bricks are manufactured on machines with tolerances as small as 10 micrometers. The primary concept and development work is done at Bill and Headquarters, where approximately 120 designers work. Smaller design offices in the United Kingdom, Spain, Germany, and Japan are also tasked with developing products for these markets. A new product's development timeframe is typically 12 months, divided into three stages. The first stage is to identify market trends and developments, which includes direct contact with the market by designers. Some are stationed in toy stores near holidays, while others interview children. The second stage is product design and development based on the results of the first stage. Moreover, since the 1950s, the LEGO Group has released thousands of sets with various themes, such as space, robots, pirates, trains, vikings, castles, dinosaurs, undersea exploration, and the Wild West, as well as the wholly original themes such as Bionicle. Classic themes that are still popular today include LEGO City and LEGO Technic. LEGO has licensed themes from various cartoon and film franchises, as well as some video game franchises over the years. Batman, Indiana Jones, Pirates of the Caribbean, Harry Potter, Star Wars, and Minecraft are among them. It also had robotic themes and was known as Mindstorms in 1999. The programmable LEGO brick is at the heart of these robotic sets has undergone several updates and redesigns, the most recent being dubbed the EV3 brick and sold as LEGO Mindstorms EV3. This set includes sensors that detect touch, light, sound, and ultrasonic waves, and an RFID reader, which is sold separately. 
The intelligent brick can be programmed using official software for Windows and Mac computers, which can be downloaded onto the brick via Bluetooth or USB cable. There are also several unofficial programs, compatible with program languages designed to work with the brick, and numerous books written to support this community. Let us know your thoughts about this game in the comments below and subscribe for more such uploads.